Hi everybody, I'm Chris Mayhew. I'm one of the co-owners of Lost Art Magic. I run the company along with my business partner and friend, Bo Creamer. We got a bunch of fun material planned for all of you uh, watching this YouTube channel in the coming weeks. So just stay tuned to this channel and you'll start to see us roll out some really fun content from a bunch of awesome creators over the coming weeks. We're going to start by sharing one of my favorite Instagram videos uh, that I've seen over the last week. Uh, I'm going to be constantly sharing and shedding spotlight on different creators uh, on this show. So uh, just keep posting awesome content and maybe your video will show up on this channel. We'll see. Okay, so the video is on my phone. You should be watching it on the screen and we can react to the video together because this is pretty craziness. I love this. This is from uh, my boy Alex Boy. Uh, he's an awesome magician, awesome YouTube magician. Check out his channel. But look at this. This already looks so good. But the only thing going through my mind is, okay, that's great. Great suspension, brother. But can you let go of that deck? And then bam, there you go. Now that shit is impossible. Look at that. You got to do the convincer with the, uh, the loop. And come on, make it. Bam. So good. I love it. I love it. So that is my favorite Instagram video of the week from Alex Boy Magic. Uh, check him out. Our next segment is gonna be from our good friend Nick Popa. This is called a Popa Moment. Take it away, Nick. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the very first installment of a Popa Moment. In today's video, we're gonna do a really cool trick with a Rubik's Cube. So, uh, I'm gonna have my cameraman, Tyler, mix the cube up. There you go. Sweet. So, it's safe to say that this is very mixed, yes? No, oh, yeah. All right, we're going to place it inside of the bag, like that. Now, all we have to do is give the bag a little shake. And just like that, your cube is now completely solved. But isn't there something in the bag? Um, all right, so you, he caught me. There's another cube in the bag, but the, the problem is uh, this cube is a little too small to do the trick with, so uh, yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this segment of A Popa Moment. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. I'm Bo Kramer. And we're going to do this segment where we talk about social media magic, where some of you may know that I do a video once a month called Cyber Surgery on our Lost Art website, where I teach you how to do Photoshop your style images. So first thing we're going to talk about is why do we do uh, social media posts and that kind of thing, and why, what is the point of this particular thing, besides obviously having a dope bath every, every month in clothes. Um, it's more to do with, you don't want to get lost in just the stream of like every, looking like everyone else's post. So the reason you want to kind of do cool looking images that stand out and obviously get um, not only engagement, but also get people to notice you and want you to work for them because they want you to create posts for them. It can lead often to work where you can either become, do social media for other people and learn what you've done, learned here to learn and work, or it can create jobs for you because people see that you're interesting and you have a, different eye for looking at things. I've always explained this to people that your grid on your Instagram for argument's sake is just like a shop window. This is what people see um, when they go to look at you and say, do I want to hire this person? Do I want to employ this person? They look at the shop window or the shop front and see what you can do and what you look like. That's where they judge a book by its cover really to see whether they want to engage further and look at your content further. So making your grid look interesting is whether they, where they're going to decide whether they want to hire you and bring you on um, or even get you to do walk around gigs and that kind of stuff. Thank for that, Bo. Now I want to take a bath. That sounds like a good idea. I may do that after I'm done recording this video. In fact, I will. This next segment is from my friend Ben. Uh, for those of you that don't know Ben Train, he's a wonderful magician and an even more wonderful friend of mine. And yeah, I decided to get him to take some of his favorite magic books and read some of uh, his most memorable quotes or ideas that uh, he's read in those books. So let's go and check out Ben Reed's books.
Today on Ben Reads Books, we're reading The Magic Way by Juan Tamariz. Published in 1987 by the Spanish Maestro, this is widely considered one of the most important books on magic theory ever written. Let's think of the spectator's minds as a beautiful carriage pulled by two lively horses. One of them advances by galloping on the ground. That's the logical side of the mind. The other horse is winged and flies. That's the imagination, fantasy, the magical desire. In the driver's seat, reins in hand is the spectator. Next to him, and at his invitation, we join him and lead him through the magic way, towards the magical effect. If he makes it there, he will feel the gorgeous flutter of mystery and immerse himself in the beautiful emotion of the magic produced, the rainbow stemming from the moon. We want to keep him undistracted on his path and prevent him from getting lost while searching for the threads of the marionette, wandering behind the stage set, intuiting the secret actions in a trick. We want to help him reject the multiple detours that his analytical, logical mind might present to him and that could make him lose his authentic path, the magic way. Thanks for that, Ben. That was nice. Uh, and now we got coming up uh, my good friend James Allen, uh, where he is going to have some thoughts on the theory of magic. So James, why don't uh, you share some of your thoughts with us? You know, I realized there are lots of things in magic that we just sort of accept and take for granted and never really question them. Uh, one thing that often gets said, uh, particularly if you read books or read uh, forums online, uh, they say that people hate card tricks, and magicians are always looking for something to add to the repertoire, which is non-cards. I remember very, very early on, I was uh, doing restaurant magic, and I would follow that advice, like Leipzig, uh, starting with the billiard balls or the thimbles, uh, and I would do something else, like sponge balls or a coin trick, uh, and I would take out the deck of cards, and the number of times I was shocked to hear them say, ooh, card tricks! people hate card tricks, then audiences should not get excited the moment you remove a deck of cards. So clearly something is not right there. Clearly there's something uh, that needs to be questioned. Uh, I think there are many things in magic that uh, we just sort of accept without evidence uh, and that we should go back and, and uh, really check to see whether or not they're true. Don't you agree? And to end the show, I thought I would end with a segment uh, that I like to call Chris Learns Tricks. Basically, this is a segment where I have a ton of magic books that I've collected over the years. A lot of them, I've only opened them to learn one or two tricks from them, and I really hadn't del delved through the whole book. So I've decided to take it upon myself to start opening these books and learning the material, the gems that are hidden within them. And I thought I would record it all for you to watch as I learn these tricks and try to perform them on camera. So let's check it out. Okay, everybody. Today we are going to learn a trick from Jerry Sadowitz, Cards on the Table. This book has a lot of really cool ideas in it. All the books that I'm sharing on here, I've learned a couple things in them, but then there's a bunch of other stuff in them that I've overlooked over the years, just because, I don't know, it just didn't, uh, didn't interest me at the time. But uh, today I'm gonna check out a trick from here and learn it for all y'alls at home. Uh, oh, this is my favorite trick from the book, and I love to do this one. I still practice it. It is called Name a Card Triumph. This is literally, from a shuffled deck, you are able to have someone name any card they want. You can shuffle the deck face up into face down, and then you can find the spectator's named card. They don't select it, they don't pull it out, they just name it. And uh, in the end, all the cards are back to being face down, except for one card, the name selection face up. That is a really cool trick. Not too difficult to do, but it does require some uh, table work skill. You need to know a zero shuffle and be good at that. So definitely check this trick out. Oh, this one, this one is a really interesting one. This is kind of like a cavorting the aces type thing, but adding kind of two other Sanders cards to make it a little more impossible. 
To be honest, this one does really intrigue me because I like cavorting the aces and maybe this could be an extra phase after I do that trick. I think I'm gonna learn aces and kings. So, uh, give me a moment everybody. I'm going to read through this, uh, this trick. Uh, what's really difficult about reading magic books is that there's a certain lingo that you kind of need to know in order to even get through the trick. And a lot of books assume that you already know certain moves. So, you know, a lot of times if you don't, you'll find yourself reading a trick and then it's talking about a move you don't know. So then you gotta go learn that move and then you come back and now you can do the trick type thing. So luckily I've been doing this for a long time. I will probably know most of the slights uh, involved in this trick. So I'll be able to read through it quick and give all y'alls uh, at least a rudimentary presentation and handling of the trick so you can see it and learn it yourselves. Let's get into it. So, okay, I think I understand this trick. I will, let me run through it real quick, and uh, then I'll show it. And notes, effective transposing the two black aces with two red aces is Dr. Daly, so there's a credit for anybody out there. Okay, so here's what this trick looks like. Uh, me just learning it, again, there's barely any presentation here. I'm just kind of going through the handling, but uh, we'll do the best we can to make it entertaining. Uh, aces! I know you said that uh, you want to see an ace trick, so let me show you an ace trick, okay? I'm not going to produce them. That's for uh, fancy people, okay? We're just going to take them out of the pack, like regular folk do. Um, and we got the black aces here, red aces here. If I just want to swap them, or uh, transpose them, I should say. Pretty easy, all right. Just did it, all right. Not that, not that hard at all. I did it again, okay. I could do it all day. It's not the point. It's pretty stupid. So we gotta make it. We gotta step it up. We gotta make it a little more impossible. So why not? Let's uh, let's introduce some kings here, okay. Look at that. They're all together as if I had done this trick several times before and had forgotten to shuffle the kings in. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna place the black kings, or the red kings, I should say, uh, between, or trapping those aces, and these cards trapping these ones, okay? Now, if I swap the cards, that's, uh, the, it doesn't work, okay? The aces stay where they are because they're trapped in between the, the kings, okay? Just to even make it a little more impossible, why don't we add a whole entire freaking deck of cards, okay? I'll place uh, these cards just about center, right? All the red cards in the center of the pack, okay? And that leaves us with the black kings. So we'll see if we can get those red aces to switch with these black aces in between the black kings. It uh, will probably be very difficult. I just gotta riffle, just gotta squeeze, and hopefully, some miracles have happened. Hopefully we got a black king, but now we have ourselves red aces in between the black kings. That's pretty, pretty wild stuff, people. Pretty wild stuff. But not only that, in the center of the pack, we should now have those black aces in between the red kings. Miracles, ace trick. Ace King trick. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, there'll be more of this coming at you soon. But like I said, stay tuned on this channel. Throughout the next coming weeks, there's going to be a lot of different content from some wonderful creators that have collaborated with Lost Art Magic to bring you some awesome content on Lost Art Magic's YouTube channel. See you soon.